Welcome everyone. Again, we are so, so uh, grateful to you who are joining us uh, via social media for uh, being with us as we go into another study of the Word of God. Well, I tell you, we love the Word of God, and I know you do too. That's why you're joining in on this study. And we've been hearing uh, really good reports of families that follow us in this study, and we just thank God for you, and, and we just ask that you be prayerful for us and all who join us in this study. Um, again, we are delighted to be here with you, with two fellow yeah. soldiers yeah. of the cross. Sure. Yeah, yeah brother. Mark Thorne, Brother Eddie Winslow, and they are here with us, and we're going to just try to delve a little bit into the Word of God. And so, Marv, if you will give us a prayer, and after sure. that prayer, set us up and transition us into our study of the Book of Romans. Sure. Uh, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we approach you right now at this moment in time when our heads bowed and our hearts open, yes. open because we anxiously await all of the blessings that you're going to pour into our lives. We thank you for everyone who's here to, to study and discuss the word of God. May we do so in a manner in which we, are, in which we will allow it to take hold of us and stimulate and serve as a catalyst to stimulate growth in each of us. Yes. Touch the lives of people who may be struggling. Comfort those who are bereaved. Yes. And touch the bodies of those who are sick. Yes. And Lord, right now, anything that may be bothering us or troubling us, we put it in your hands so that we can listen to what you have to say to us clearly and without distraction. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Okay, so last week, we talked about Romans chapter 3. And Romans chapter 3 opened with Paul asking a series of questions, primarily uh, who, who, who was better off, circumcised or uncircumcised. Mm -hmm. And as we went through that chapter, he, he uh, taught us that God's faithfulness is not impacted by our unfaithfulness nor our disobedience. Mm -hmm. He even went so far as to share with us that no one on the face of this earth is good. Mm -hmm. Nobody it's good. Uh, we saw that in the series of statements where he uh, where he set it up around verse four or five or so, when he said no one was good. Then he talked about how uh, our mouths were like tombs, mm -hmm. uh, and how we had uh, the part the venom of asp under our lips, and how our feet were swift to run toward innocent blood, to shed innocent blood. Excuse me, but he said all of that to say that in spite of our imperfections, that God had something in place to make it possible for us to stand as righteous individuals before him. We call yes. that justification. Yes. And he, lets us, and he let us know in Romans chapter 3 that we are justified by our faith in God. Yes. Uh, according to the old law, which was a list of things, a list of wrongdoings, a list of, it was a mechanism that pointed out wrongdoings, excuse me, he lets us know that, you know, don't, don't worry about trying to be perfect. Just make the commitment to God to be faithful. Yes. And he puts a cap and he, uh, and he summarizes that in verse number 28 of Romans chapter 3 when he says, Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith apart from the deeds of the law. Wow. Do yeah. we see that? Yeah. That we are justified or that is made righteous in the presence of an unrighteous God separate and apart from trying to live a perfect life. And to drive this point home, he leads us into chapter four where he talks about someone who was a, a highly respected figure in their culture and that is Abraham or Father Abraham, if you will. He uses Abraham as an example of faith an individual who God honored before circumcision was instituted and who yes. was honored because of his faithfulness as well. Yes. And if you don't mind to get the discussion going, I'll read the first four verses, then I'm going to give way to, uh, to Tim and Eddie. I'm reading from the New King James Version. The Bible says, What then shall we say that Abraham our father, what, excuse me, what then shall we say that Abraham our father has found according to the flesh? For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, God. 
and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Now to him who works the wages are not counted as grace, but as that. And he, and so in addition to being faithful, we see that word grace, G-R-A-C-E, which was mentioned quite a bit in Romans chapter three. He lets us know that we that with this access of great with this access to grace to us, is it relieves us of the uh, unrighteous debt that we accrued. It is God's way of looking at a debt that we've accrued and wiping the slate clean and giving us a new start. Right, right, wow. right, right, right. You know, um, uh, go ahead. I, I love this because he's he's talking. Uh, to the Jews primarily who they consider Abraham their father in the flesh. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and then I, I guess the three of the uh, three main mono, mono, patriarchs. Yeah. Monoistic faiths. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Monolistic. Monolistic faith. Yeah. Count Abraham as the father. Yeah. Yes. Monotheistic. The, I got you. Yeah, monotheistic. monotheistic. Yes. Help yeah. me. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Christians, Jews, and yeah. Muslims. Muslims. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But he says, you missed it. Abraham was not considered righteous because he was your father in the flesh right. because he was circumcised. No, 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 no. Abraham believed God. Yeah, yes. yeah. And yeah. then it was a credit <laughs> to his account as uh, righteousness. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, he yeah. says faith equals righteousness. Works don't equal righteousness. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's and that, right. That, that, that's mind boggling to them, probably. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, they'd yeah. always believe the other way. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I think it's and, mind boggling to a lot of folks today, too, uh -huh, who still think right. that way, too. Mm -hmm. I, I'm going to go back just for a moment, though, sure. from, from, from last week, though, about the kind of person that thinks that mm -hmm. that it's because of what we do that makes us acceptable to God. Sure. Now, mm -hmm. I think, and it's important, I think that everybody knows we are not discounting obedience or not, anything not like that. All. Nobody. And Paul is not. No. Paul wrote some no, of the strongest not. messages on obeying God because uh, the proper response to faith is obedience. Yes. In fact, that's what faith yes. is yes. when you obey yes. God. But Paul is dealing with something that's tricky in the human mind. It's mm -hmm. easy for us to confuse yeah. the response to salvation with the reason for salvation. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. Right. See, there's a difference between mm -hmm. our response to what Jesus did and the reason, reason. why Jesus did mm -hmm. what he did. <laughs> okay. Okay. He did it because of his love and his grace toward us. He didn't do it because we had everything right. Sure. And, uh, but, sure. but here in the book of Luke, I'm just going to back a little bit. In chapter 18, that mm -hmm. whole parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector. Yes. I, I just want to just kind of read this one. because this is what is produced when I think we don't get this whole idea that Paul is talking about in Romans. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the Bible says in verse 9, to some who are confident in their own righteousness, yeah. And look down on everyone else, Jesus told this parable. Mm -hmm. And I'm reading from Luke chapter 18 and 9. And Paul's whole point is, it's not <coughs> your righteousness. It's the righteousness of Christ that he did on that cross yeah. that gets you into the presence yeah. of God. Mm -hmm. And look what he said. Two men went up to the temple to pray. One a Pharisee, yeah. the other a tax collector. Like and these were two Jews, by the way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, mm -hmm. I thank you. I am not, not like, like other people, people. Yeah. robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. Mm -hmm. I fast <laughs> twice a week. I give a tenth of all I get. But the tax collector stood at a distance. Mm -hmm. He would not even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God, Mm -hmm. Have mercy on oh, me, mercy. a sinner. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think, personally, that ties into what Paul is saying. Sure. Yeah. That if you don't get it right, mm -hmm. as far as grace and what God has done, You'll wind up just like this Pharisee. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And I love, and so he gives Abraham, and I like what, what you read in the text, uh, Mark, where he says about Abraham that, verse 2, 
Abraham was justified, if that if Abraham was justified works, he would have something to brag about. Right. He'd say he'd have something to brag about. But, but Abraham, but what does scripture say? Abraham believed God and it was credited. And to me, that's a banking term. Mm -hmm. It's like shifting something from one account yeah. to another account. And to me, that falls in line with what Jesus did on the cross that Paul talked about, mm -hmm. that when he died on that cross, he shifted mm -hmm. righteousness yeah. Yeah. from, from his account, <laughs> yeah. to, our account. to the other. Yeah. We had none in our account. Mm -hmm. Look, no. <laughs> we no. found out last week, nobody had anything. Yeah. So our sure. account was empty. Yes. And what he yeah. did, literally, he shifted mm -hmm. righteousness from the account of heaven mm -hmm. wow. and shifted it to us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But before that, I like what he did. He shifted our unrighteousness mm -hmm. to Jesus. Yeah. But it has to be paid. Yes. Yeah. So he took our debt. So we had a whole lot of stuff we owed. Yeah. We had nothing in there. He yeah. shifted our debt to Jesus. Uh -huh. Jesus paid the price because our debt was sin and the wages of sin is debt. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He shifted our debt. That's just like, Marv, you know, you love uh -huh. me so much. And you yeah. say, Tim, take a, I want to take all your bills. Yeah. yeah. I want That's your right. house note, uh -huh. your car note. Yeah. And bring it to me. Mm -hmm. Marvin, do it. But, <laughs> and you say, Tim, I, I pay it. Those yeah. of you who are watching, yeah. just imagine if every bill that you have. Come on now. You came and you and, and a friend said, give me every note you have. Not just now, but every note that you will acquire in the future. In the future, every day. Yeah. Give it to me. Yeah. I'll pay it all. Yeah. Wouldn't you love that person? Oh, yeah. Wow. wow. Yeah, that, that was... Yeah, that would keep people from worrying about getting that 400th credit score. That's right. <laughs> It'd so be above the 700s, so, right? Um, so what he's doing, I think with Abraham, he's illustrating mm -hmm. what justification through faith is like. Yes. And he yeah. said, I'm just reading the next one. Now, to the one who works, wages are not credited as a gift. I'm reading from the New International Version as sure. a gift, but as an obligation. What is a NIV? Is it NIV read a little differently? Do you, you guys yeah, I got New King James. New King James, oh, verse 4. It. What does uh, you say, Eddie? Now to him who works, mm -hmm. the wages are not counted as grace, but as debt. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, wow. yeah. I owe it to you. Yeah. So yeah. Jesus, yeah, I like that translation. Yeah. actually better. Yeah. He did not owe us anything. Yeah. He owed us nothing. Actually, what we deserve. Was to, yeah. was to die, uh -huh. separated forever from God yes. yeah. in yeah. the devil's hell. That's mm -hmm. what we earned. That's what we earned. Yeah. <laughs> but he said, I'm going to not give you what yeah. you earned. Uh -huh. That's mercy. That's right. I'm going to give you what you didn't yeah. earn. That's grace. That's right. Wow. wow. That's yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah. But could we imagine the impact that this had when Paul, when Paul shared with them that Abraham, who is the the patriarch of the nation mm -hmm. was not justified by works. Could we imagine yeah. that? Because yeah, sure. that, that was a works-based culture. Yeah. You know, that was their mode of yeah. operation. Yeah, their, their, and, their religion. Yeah. And he, he even goes back, he said, what does the scripture say? Yeah. So, <laughs> this ain't See? new. Yeah, this See? Is a, 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 God's always said this. Yes. It's always been by yes. faith. He's always, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, I think that, that was a good point, what both of you are bringing up. Uh -huh. He's saying this ain't new. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The principle of salvation by grace through faith yeah. is eternal. Yeah, it's always That's been, always there. been yeah, that yeah. way. You guys just missed it. Right. But it's right. always, and I say to all of us, salvation by grace through faith. Yeah. That's Old and New Testament. Mm -hmm. It is. It's yeah. always been like that. Yeah. It's always been like that. You know, mm -hmm. he says too in verse five, however, to the one who does not work but trust God, who just, and this to me is amazing, who justifies mm -hmm. the, un the ungodly. ungodly. Wow. That idea was, I got to work and be godly. Yeah. yeah. And then he'll justify me. Yeah. They say, uh-uh, guys. <laughs> he, that's grace. He actually justifies the ungodly. Wow. Yeah. Boy, that, that's yeah. ought to be a hallelujah moment. Yeah, wow. <laughs> work, work says, mm -hmm. I got to come up. Grace said he came down. Oh, yeah, yeah I love that. Came, I love that. Down. That's wow. good. Isn't it? I love uh, that. Yeah. that look, and that says to all of us, no matter how down you get he in your sin, yeah. you yeah. can't get so low that grace can't come down to where you are. Mm -hmm. and, and in verse 6, he refers to another historical giant. Yeah. David. Just as David also described the blessedness of the man 
to whom God imputes righteousness apart from works. Blessed are those lawless deeds. Blessed are those, blessed are those whose lawless deeds are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord shall not impute sin. Ooh, I like that. I like yeah. that. So you, you just too. Go ahead. Yeah. Now, you, you know, by the Bible being so open with the, uh, with the faults even of our heroes of the faith, yeah. You know, and so now he's saying, hey. That's a good point. Yeah, because, you know, we have a tendency, like, once you die, right. we, eul we do eulogistic yeah, remarks yeah, yes, take away yeah. all of your, of your mess up. And he said, no, 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 no. Abraham, David. David. You know, the, our heroes in the faith was the rascals. Yes. The reality is, yeah, that's a good, good point. Yeah. He used two people yeah. who were really broken men. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Abraham come from a, 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 a polytheistic heathen culture. Oh, that's yeah. what his daddy was. Yeah. And you know what David did? Yeah. That, yeah. Oh, again, oh, yeah. going back yeah. to Abraham. Look, the man lied yeah. and nearly got his wife sexually assaulted. Yeah. Sure. To but, protect himself. Yeah. yeah. Move his wife out of his protection, out of his out of own, sphere of protection. Sphere of protection. Yeah. But then David, yeah. look, slept with one of his soldiers who trusted him. Loyal soldiers. Mm -hmm. Loyal soldiers. Mm -hmm. Slept with his wife, got her pregnant, then murdered the man. Yeah. Then took his wife and lived for about two years like he had done nothing wrong. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it's a good point here. He takes two of our yeah. Uh, yeah. heroes yes. who's... Faults are written. Yeah. And I think that's the difference between the Bible and so-called other holy books. Mm -hmm. You know, some of these other books, when they talk about their heroes, they don't sure. say anything bad about yeah, them. Yeah. But the Bible gives the good, the bad, yeah. and the ugly. And, and yeah. the ugly, and, and, straight up. And, sure. And, and while you're on that, another thought came to mind is there are some who believe that the Bible was heavily influenced by a certain group of people. Mm -hmm. and But what they fail to realize, to your point, mm -hmm. is that the Bible condemns sin regardless of who yeah. commits it. Right, mm -hmm. right, yeah. right. It don't leave any of us looking good. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. nobody's no, good. Like, no, no, no. And that's why grace yeah. is all through this, yeah. this book, Old and New Testament. And I like what he said. Blessed, verse 7, I think you uh -huh. read it. Yeah. Are those whose transgressions are forgiven. Transgress has to do with crossing the line. Uh -huh. And all of us have crossed some lines but whose sins are covered. covered. And he didn't say covered up. up. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, covered <laughs> up. There's a difference between a cover covered. up uh -huh. and, and being covered. covered. Wow. Yeah, yeah. that's the difference between being a cover up. I like to use the example of, if I went in the Papa Do's, I use that example, and then me and my family ate about 200 or $300 worth of sure. food. Sure. And then we get ready to pay. I, ain't, I don't have no money. Yeah. And I asked Miss mm -hmm. Daniel, she said, I ain't bring no money Me either. either. Yeah. But then Eddie steps over. He's another yeah. table. Eddie yeah. comes over and says, you know what? I got it covered. Yeah. I got it covered. Come yeah. on with me and I'll pay for it. Mm -hmm. Now, that's to me covered. That's covered. Sure. Taking care. But now, if we decide we don't have no money, then we say, well, let's look for a way to slip out the side door. Yeah. That's a cover up. That's a cover up. <laughs> that's a cover up. <laughs> yeah. So God, he said, it's there. Mm -hmm. I want you to see it. I want everybody to see it. God sees what you did. It's not a cover up. You did it. But guess what? I'm going to pay the price for it. Mm. I got it covered. In other words, I've covered the price for what you did. And he's saying, you don't have no money. You can't pay. And that's what I think with us, and he's describing in those first three chapters, you can't pay for what you did. Mm -hmm. You're bankrupt. Even if I kill you, you right. couldn't pay because the, the payment for sin has to be a perfect sacrifice. Mm -hmm. You can pay for it even if no, I No, not at all. You ain't no way, no how you can pay yeah. to God what justice demands for your sin. Uh -huh. No way. No way. Even if I kill you, send you to hell forever. So it took a perfect sacrifice. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. it's all grace. Mm -hmm. And what we do and obedience is the response to that grace. Yes. And let me tell you, my theology totally shifted when I understood that concept. Wow. When I understood that all this mm -hmm. stuff that we do, and I understand all the scriptures about we got to obey God and God accepts yeah. those who obey him. And I think those scriptures are there for us to understand. We need to mm -hmm. obey God. Yeah. But Paul said, let's go to the heart of the theology. Right. There is absolutely nothing you can do or could ever do to justify God saving you. It's all him. 
Yeah. Ain't none of you. <laughs> and that can shake your theology sure. when you think that, sure. hey, I have a works-based yeah. uh -huh. deal. I think those who have a conflict between works and faith really are, are those who really don't look at themselves honestly. I agree. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like I'm thinking I'm something that I'm not. Yeah. No, you know. Like when Jesus tells the, the man in, in I, it was Luke 10, he says, uh, mm -hmm. The man said, how can I inherit eternal life? He says, so right. what does the word say? What does the word say? Yeah. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with yeah. all your mind, all, all, all. Well, that's, whenever they start talking about all, I say, that's God talk. Man. <laughs> yes. Because yeah, we, we, we don't do all. We yeah, don't do all. Right. We don't do never. Yes. Yeah. You know, yeah. We, we, we mess up. Yeah. yeah. And so that, that man said, well, okay. I've, and he says, well. I've done that. Really, he's saying, I've, I've right. done that. So, Because yeah. Jesus said, well, okay, just do that. Mm -hmm. And you good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He know that you can't do that. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah. Can't, you can't meet God's standard for, for loving God or for loving other people. That's right. Yeah. That's right. When, when, you, when, you reference, when you reference the word all, it made me think about yeah. when we were in elementary school mm -hmm. and they taught us how to differentiate uh, factual statements from opinionated statements, and one of the buzzwords was all. All, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All, never. Yeah, all yeah, never. yeah, yeah. Mm. Those absolute. Yeah, yeah. Mm, I like that. The fact that all and ever—that's God talk. Yeah. That's right. God talk. God talk. God talk. God talk. We, we can't do all. We can't do it all. Uh, yeah, yes, we can't uh, say I'm on no. love all. Everybody, you got to be connected with God yeah. to yeah, use yeah, that kind of talk. That's it. Yes, He's the only one who can be absolute. And you know, in His text, though, He talks about that. I love the points you guys are bringing up. He talks about in verse with verse 9. He say, is this blessedness and his by that, love it, okay, that's only it. for the circumcised, Keep uh -oh, going. but also for the uncircumcised. Keep going, Tim. Get, get to the we, good part. <laughs> we have been saying that Abraham's faith was credited to him as righteousness. Under what circumstances was it credited? Keep going. Adam. Was it after he was circumcised? Uh -huh. Or before? before. Mm -hmm. It was not after, mm -hmm. but, but before. Before. before he did any of the stuff. Yeah. And he received circumcision as a sign, mm -hmm. yeah. a seal of the righteousness that he had by faith while he was still uncircumcised. Yeah. So then, I'm telling you, this will mess up your theology. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> so then, he is the father of all who believed but have not been circumcised. Direct deal to the Jews, mm -hmm. to the Jews, because they yeah. figured we've been circumcised, and that makes us, even though they all were Christian, mm -hmm. that we're somehow more righteous than you Christians who've not been right. circumcised, in order, watch it, that righteousness might be credited to him, and he is then also the father of the circumcised who not only are circumcised, but who also follow the, in the footsteps of faith that our father Abraham had before, he keeps talking about before Boy. he was circumcised. Yeah. He says, it, it, it was not through the law that Abraham and his offspring received the promise that he would be heir of the wor world, mm -hmm. but through the righteousness that comes by faith. faith. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He keeps driving that home. Yes. It's by faith. faith. Yeah. And not, and again, a lot of fighting even among religious people is because people don't really have it right as to what really saves us. Mm -hmm. Because if I'm saved by grace, you can't fight over grace. Mm -mm. No. I, yeah, how can anybody <coughs> fight you know, over grace? Yeah. I want to mm -hmm. point out something in verses 16 and 17, if I'm not getting too far ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, when he says, I'm reading from the New King James, therefore, it is a faith <clears throat> that it might be according to grace, so that the promise might be sure to all seed, not only those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of, of us all. Mm. Here's the part, verse 17, as it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. In the presence of him whom he believed, God, who gives life to the dead, and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. Hmm. And the reason why 
Yeah, what I like about that is he's painting a clearer picture of what righteousness is about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's about God. It's about having faith in him, which is our response, mm -hmm. and receiving his grace, which is God's, uh, let's see, we respond, God's, uh, God's yes. initial action, mm -hmm. if you will. The grace is his initial action, and faith is our response to him. Right, yeah. right, yeah. right, right. And, and, he, and he also lets us know that the individual to whom Abraham placed his faith was not just an ordinary being. It is a God who could call things that did not exist as if they did. Who else can do that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 You, you can't do that. You know, verse 18, I like, yeah. to me, I think some of the blessings that come from when you understand that it's God. He said, against all hope. Yeah. Part of the good news of the gospel, it, it gives us hope. Sure. I mean, so many people feel hopeless because uh -huh. things yes, are so messed up. Yeah. And, and they just don't see their way out. Yeah. And I think when we understand it's on God and not us, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. have hope. That's You know, I'm limited. Yes. If, if, yes. if I'm going to yes. get some things done because of my resources or my knowledge, it'll never happen. No, it won't. Mm -hmm. But if I have faith in God. Yes. And again, faith is means faith plus obedience. Yes. Now, it's not the yeah, obedience, obedience yeah. that initiates it. Mm -hmm. It's God's grace. Yes. But faith enough to say, God, no matter what things look like, yeah. I'm going to just do what you say. Yeah. I mess up sometimes. Right. But I'm going to still get up and do what you say. Sure. Because you are faithful when I'm faithless. Yes. Even when I mess up, you're uh -huh. still faithful. And I, he talked about that in chapters 2 and 3 when he talked about even though we mess up, is God still faithful? Mm. And God made promises to the Jews. And sure. even though they were unfaithful, messed yeah. up, he could have wiped them out. Yeah. But God said, I'm going to find a way, even through your brokenness, uh -huh. to fulfill my promise. Absolutely. And I like that. We and can trust him because he can make the impossible mm -hmm. happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he can even use your brokenness Absolutely. to make it happen. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, yeah, that's what he said. And if uh, I'm just going to read the weird, mm, just about out of time, mm -hmm. I'm going to read these, the last part so we can finish okay. chapter four. He says, yet, uh, let's start with verse 19, because he's talking about Abraham and Sarah. Okay. Without weakening in faith. Now, I, I, I'm, let me just say this. I got to make this point, though. Okay. See, he said, without weakening in faith. But if you read the story of Abraham, his faith did get weak. Mm -hmm. I, I was just looking at this. I said, no, wait a minute. Paul is looking at this saying without weakening in faith, but his faith did get weak. When he was in Canaan, famine, instead of staying there, he left, went to Egypt, found Hagar. Mm -hmm. Then later on, he had that baby with Hagar because mm -hmm. he began to think that God was not going to do mm -hmm. what he said yeah. by giving him to say Rebecca. Right. The years passed, the years passed. And, you know, that was the time, I think, in chapter 15, where he told Abraham, step outside because right. he was going to use his safe, his, right. his friend, uh, to uh, maybe have a descendant through him. Mm -hmm. So it says without wavering, but when you read the story, you do see how now he wavered. So is there a conflict? I say no. Mm -hmm. This is a grace book. Yeah. I think what happened is this. God's righteousness covered his weakness. His way so way when way. we yeah. his way so when we read about Abraham here, ain't none of his stuff yeah. in this in the record. Yeah. And that's what I believe about heaven. Listen, when we get to heaven, all of us got stuff. I'm, I don't want to see mm -hmm. when I go to heaven. But mm -hmm. I think when we get to heaven, the record will be like Abraham's record. God mm -hmm. can say, Tim Daniels, he was faithful without wavering. Yeah. I know yeah. in my story I wavered. Yeah. But his blood, blessed are the man whose sins are covered, yeah. covered it. So when you read my story and I get to sure. heaven, it's, he, he, it's covered. Yeah. <laughs> and and, and, and Faith that struggles is still faith. It's yes. still faith. That's, that's, right. that's, that's right. That's right. Yeah, you, you struggle. And right. You, mm -hmm. you know, you have conflicting thoughts, but faith, it, you started out, you said uh, he that what believed, mm -hmm. you know, that you said, uh, we started out, you, you, you had something in the beginning that said had that. Oh, he, that it was accounted to him because yeah. he believed. God. Because he, he believed. believed God. Abraham yeah. accounted yeah. to him because he believed God. Believed yeah. God so yeah. it, it was credited to him mm -hmm. 
because he believed. Now, he didn't believe perfectly. Yeah, yeah. He, but he believed. But he believed. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Ultimately, yeah. he believed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I like that. A, a, yeah. a weak in faith, a faltering faith is still faith. Still, still faith. And God honors yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. But does a faltering faith question God's promise or does it question God's process? That's the question. Uh, yeah, you know, because when we think about it as, as, as people, we know God is capable, but sometimes things like being patient, sometimes things like applying mm -hmm. biblical principles while we're waiting, mm -hmm. that's a struggle, but we haven't forget, we haven't given up on the promise, yeah. but sometimes that process. So, so yeah. yeah, so. How was so, God going to do it? God gonna, <laughs> yeah. So, well, yeah. you might hey, God. Excellent yeah. point. Yeah. Yeah. We hate to bring it up so yeah. late. Yeah. That's right. We waver sometimes yeah. in the process. Yes. Yeah. And look, that's not yeah. a person who's. Right. Been walking with God, haven't wavered right. in the process. We haven't given up on the mm -hmm. promise, though. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. yeah. Just I, yeah. and on that thought, <laughs> <laughs> Robert just provoked us. You guys, <laughs> bring it up on that just thought. Shut it down. We, we're gonna have to close because yeah, 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 yeah. we are out. Wow, of time. That, that, that's good. But we're gonna take it up, and you yeah. know what? We are not afraid to ask the hard questions right. in here. So we're gonna bring up some. Some hard questions that we struggle with even now. Boy. Yeah, 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 we do. Uh, wow. About yeah. uh, trusting the promise and trusting the process. Uh, yeah. And what that means in our walk with God. Sure. And some of you are watching us right now and you're saying, I trust God, but I'm in a process right now and I don't know how God mm -hmm. brought it up. Yeah. How mm -hmm. God is going to do this or when he's going to do it and who he's going to use and why is it taking so long? Right. right. And so we're going to, we'll talk a little bit about that. So uh, we want you to uh, read ahead for us and read chapters five and chapter six. And we're going to look at chapters five and six uh, next time. Okay. And uh, thank you again and again if you have questions about your walk with God. If we can be of any, any help, call us, call the church, and we'll be more than happy to introduce you or help you in your walk with God. Whether it's the process or just trying to get <laughs> to the, the problem. Wow. And thank you very much for being with us. Thank God you. God bless you.